in the middle of spring. Certain trees and bushes look as if they have been dusted by flower. This is the May. In my back garden, at the same time, things are very green. The blossom has gone from the cherry tree and the daffodils have lost their blooms. The sun shining through the ferns reveal patterns inside the leaves. Beyond, there are still bluebells in flower. Amongst the grass, there are cowslips. And as with their cousins, the primrose, there are two types of flower. They pin flower with the female parts dominant. And the thrum flower with the male parts, the anthers, dominant. In another part of the garden, I have oxide daisies already in flower. The white petals surrounding a multitude of yellow florets. Looking closely at these florets, one can see that they are arranged in spirals. By my pond, a purple flower that goes by many names. Some call this Granny's bonnet. Others see that the petals remind them of eagles and so call it aquilegia. Others see five doves and call it columbine. This bee is not worried by this by this multitude of names. It is visiting the flower for the pollen. In my pond, uh, there are tadpoles, known by some as polywiggles. On the shingle area in my garden, there is saxifrage. with a mass of green and white flowers with intricate veining, dancing in a slight breeze, showing their faces towards the sun. In my garden and in the nearby golf course, there are buttercups. There are two types of buttercup. Creeping buttercup with its broad leaves and low growth habit and the meadow buttercup, tall, slender, with slim, narrow, pointed leaves. By the entrance to the golf course, the pendulous sedge. On the bracts, there are both male and female flowers. The male is the structure at the end of the spike, here the whiter colour, and beyond it, beneath it, the female flowers. This is also a plant much loved by the brown-lipped snail that comes in a variety of colour patterns. and can perform acrobatic feats. The song that accompanied that particular part of the film is that of a nearby wren. In the golf course, it looks as if 
errant golfers have left their golf balls lying around, uh, but these are the seed heads of dandelions. By a pond and elsewhere, ladies smoke. One can eat in salad the leaves of this plant, slightly mustardy in flavour, but it is loved by the orange tip butterfly. The female lays a bright orange, highly sculptured egg and leaves behind a pheromone to prevent other females from laying on the same plant. Nearby, the other favoured plant of the orange tip, this is Jack in the Hedge, otherwise known as Hedge Garlic or Hedge Mustard. Recently, these edible leaves have appeared in a potato salad and in a quiche. In the hedgerows around the golf course, there is red campion with its male flowers and its female flowers. The hedgerows in May are festooned with cow parsley. A distinctive feathery leaf. This plant has numerous names. I knew it as a child as rabbit meat, a reference to its use for feeding to rabbits. In some of the woodland on the golf course, there are native bluebells. Visited here by a cardaby. There are rhododendrons, some with their buds tightly shut, others where the buds have got a little colour showing, or a little more or nearly completely open, or actually in their full glory, the bush alive with colour. Amongst the varied colours of the trees on the golf course, one's also attracted by sound. The sound of the aspen. The leaves fluttering in a gentle breeze. It's the shape of the petioles. That's the structure that attaches the leaf to the, the branch. It, it's thin and it shakes as the wind blows. Side by side, an ash tree on the left and a rowan on the right. The ash just come into leaf with indistinct small flowers. The rowan more into leaf with the white flowers. But as far as flowers are concerned, those of the horse chestnut are the star of spring. On each of the candles, the male flowers are at the top, the female flowers at the bottom, and in between, a mixture of both male and female. The plant gets its name from these horseshoe-shaped marks on its slender branches. In the foreground, the grasses, in this case, Timothy, the bane of those who suffer from hay fever. And in the background, the hawthorn, the may, or because of the odour it gives off, its other name is plague flower or plague thorn. The plant itself has many uses. The leaves can be eaten, and they're commonly referred to as 
bread and cheese, the blossom and the berries can be made into wines and jellies. All things to look forward to.